Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. In this video, we will be seeing how to use the AI generative fill feature to turn an ordinary shot like this of this cappuccino into something much more pleasing like this. So basically, we're going to be changing the background in a very realistic way. And I say something like this because generative fill often gives different results, but we will be able to get close to this at least. It will not just be the use of generative fill. We will also take a bit of a help of Another AI tool, very popular tool, the chat GPT uh, tool here. So just make sure that you have got your account ready with OpenAI. It's completely free to use. You can just go to Google, type in chat GPT account creation or OpenAI account creation. Also, before we get started, just want to point out that in order to use whatever I'm going to be showing you right now, you need to have the real Photoshop, the Photoshop that you pay for, the latest Photoshop that you get access through via Creative Cloud. If you don't have that and if you just want to see how things work, you can subscribe for a seven-day trial that they offer and you will be able to use these AI features that I'm going to be showing you. The link to that trial offer will be given also in the district in the description along with this particular image so that you can work along with me now let's get started so the first thing we need to do is if you look at this original image it doesn't it's it gets cut off from here right so first of all we are actually going to be using ai just to get this back because ultimately we will be making a selection of this cup okay so let's quickly take the crop tool and we are just basically going to slightly expand this, okay? Till the time you feel like, yes, this will be completed by AI. Then make sure in the properties here for the crop tool under fill, it says generative expand. So this is again an AI tool, which is just going to fill up the empty areas. And we're just going to hit this check mark and let's just wait for the results. And as you can see that it has done a pretty good job. We get multiple variations here, but we don't even need to check because this is fine. We're just going to quickly merge the visible layers here, okay, simply because we won't really, you know, be needing those uh, extra layers with the mask because now we're treating this as the original. Now what we're going to do is we need to select this cup, cup first of all, right? So we can use the object selection tool for this. Uh, you can either use it on the rectangle, but I prefer it on the lasso mode so that you can just, in a freehand way, you can draw around this and then ask Photoshop to just look for something inside this area. So I like the freeform version. You can choose that. And the moment you do that, it'll just render and it'll give us the selection previews like this. As you can see, it's been able to select both of them. So I can just click here. And the moment you do that, it's going to just turn everything into those marching ants, signifying a selection. You can see it's right now, it's only done it for the cup, but we, I can hold down shift and you can see that it's going to add to the selection so i'm also going to add this saucer here so let's do that and once that is done we have a decent selection you can see it has missed out some areas here that often happens so that's not a problem because we can always take our lasso tool hold down shift just to add to the existing selection so add these areas add these areas I don't think anything else is missing here, right? So now we can open up a layer mask so that we get rid of the background. We don't need it anymore. And right now it's a good idea to just smoothen out the edges because sometimes when you make these selections on these hard edge surfaces, the edges can become a bit jagged. So what we can do is with this layer mask selection uh, highlighted or selected, this is where your selection is. We can open the select and mask tool. Even though, to be frank, this is slightly optional, but I always feel this should be done because it also shows you some of the other deficiencies in the selection. So if I take the zoom tool, you can see, right, we still have a bit of these gaps remaining. These parts are not selected because this is black, right? So first of all, what we can do is before we take care of the edges, let's just take the manual brush here by which we can paint things in. And if you just... By default, it's on the plus mode. So if you just run it over, it's going to add to those selections If it, if in case it has missed anything. Sometimes the object selection tool does a pretty good job and it doesn't really miss anything. So you can see now I've added pretty much everything. However, if I take the zoom tool again, and this was what I was talking about, some of these edges can look a bit bad, right? So what you can do here is just use the smooth slider and that's just going to fix this. Not too much, but maybe around this much. And you can see it just rectifies that issue. Now we have a much 
cleaner selection, a much better selection with, with better edges. So we move on to the next part of this process, which is to determine what should be the canvas of the image. So remember, we're kind of going for something like this. So you have to now take a call here that what is the ultimate objective that you plan to use this image for? So let's say that we plan to use this on Instagram. And on Instagram, one of the very popular formats or ratios that we use is the square format, right? So when we take our crop tool, we can set this to square, okay? One is to one. And then you can see that it's just gonna maintain those dimensions. And all we just need to do at this stage is just make sure that this comes within the canvas, okay? So that is the case, and then I can just hit enter. So now, so we don't really wanna generate this, so make sure when you do this, remember from the last time onwards, generator expand was selected, just let it be on transparent. So I just forgot to do that. And you can see we can just create something like this, move it here, and just hit enter. So now we've got a good, you know, aspect ratio also here, one is to one. And now is the next step where we need to just make this smaller. This will again be subjective. You know, for example, in this case, when I did this, you can see this was the size I was going for. And I was kind of going for a rule of the thirds composition here. So I just made it this, transformed it to uh, be this small and just moved it on one corner. That's exactly what I'm gonna do here also. So we're gonna hit control or command T to access the transform tool and then Let's just make this smaller. Again, I'm gonna put it on this side. That should be fine, something like this. And now is the time to finally use the main AI tool, which is generative fill. So what we need to do is, first of all, always make sure that the contextual text bar is on. It was already on, I'm just showing you that this bar should be there, contextual text or task taskbar, because this is where generative fill will ultimately come in. Now we need to get back our selection Okay, how you can do that is if you just hold down control command and hit the layer mask, you're gonna get your selection. But right now it is selecting the subject. We want to work on the background, so we need to go to the select menu and inverse this. Now is the time that we are gonna use generative fill because we're gonna hit this and we have to give it a prompt. Now you can type in something like, a cafe on your own, a dark cafe with bokeh effect and all you can type, but I just, this is the part where I like to use ChatGPT, okay? So if you go here in ChatGPT and just tell ChatGPT what exactly is it that you're doing in Photoshop. So I don't wanna type the whole thing just to save time. So here I've written that I want a prompt for a blurred cafe in the background with dark lighting to be used for generative fill in Photoshop and the subject is a cup of coffee. So just describe what you're doing because then it'll be able to give you some good, good results and the reason I have written blurred cafe here is, I've been deliberate about this. This is because in the original shot that we had of this a cup of cappuccino, the background was a bit blurred. So it'll just be more realistic even when we generate this new background which is slightly blurred in nature, okay? So we're gonna go back to chat GPT, let's hit this and it will give us a nice prompt here. So you can just simply select this because it's too tough to you know imagine this and then type this on your own in Photoshop. So just copy this, go back to Photoshop and here we can just paste this and now let's just wait for the magic. So let's see what kind of results this gives us. All right, let's wait for this. And you can see that is absolutely magnificent. That's why we didn't even need to take the shadow because generative fill is intelligent enough to put the shadow on its own. So this is like really, really amazing. We've even got more variations. Let's see the second one here. This also looks good, but this looks a bit too blurred, right? Everything looks too smooth. I think the first one till now was the best. This is also not bad, but I don't like the bokeh effect here. I think this one was really nice, right? And finally, one thing, it's kind of optional, but if you just want to slightly match the lighting, because this is kind of warm and this is from the original, you can always open up a color balance layer here. And just in the mid-tones, that means in the middle kind of areas, just, uh, you know, the areas which are not too bright and not too dark, those areas, basically we are just adding a bit of red and just a bit of yellow. So you can see, right, it just adds that warmth. Now I feel that if you see the before and after, it just merges well with the scene. And then you can merge this and export this. So this is how you use generative fill to make these amazing shots by changing the background. Now I've got two resources for it because throughout this video, we use things like layer masks, selections. If you're new to this, 
My first resource to you is that I've got a free Photoshop course which has 20 videos. It's completely free. You can sign up for it and it'll just teach you all the basics so that you can do advanced stuff like this and understand it well. If you are already on that level, then I've got another resource for you which completely deals with the AI part of Photoshop. I have a very, very detailed and long course called Photoshop Generative AI Editing Masterclass which is available by via Udemy. So you can check that out. Also, both the links to both these courses will be given in the description. I hope that you like this video. In case you did, give it a thumbs up, do subscribe, and I will hope to see you in another video very, very soon.